Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Puck Cast. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. John is back from the desert to join us in wonderful weather, Omaha. Uh, here to record a podcast and talk a little bit about hockey this past weekend. John, how does it feel to be home again? I think it feels great to be home again. Bridget was loving the 70 something degree weather that we were having down in the desert. And ever since we went to a conference down there in 2006, she's wanted to move to Phoenix. So this dreary rainy weather that we're having as we're recording is not helping uh, her, uh, her uh, want to stay uh, here in Omaha for the long term, but I've got to do everything in my power to do that because we love watching UNO hockey and we love talking about UNO hockey on this podcast. And we've got a lot of fun things to talk about today, but before do we get to that, we've got to thank our founding members for their support of the Mav Puck cast this season. As I'm talking, you are seeing a scroll with the names uh, of the folks who donated uh, to MavPuck.com and the MavPuckCast this season. So thank you uh, for those uh, donations. Uh, their names will also appear at the end of each episode of the MavPuckCast. And if you'd like to support what we're doing here, be sure to visit MavPuck.com forward slash donate. But you and I went into Tempe on November 15th and 16th, hoping... Uh, to rebound from a six game losing streak. Uh, Bridget and I were there. There were a number of UNO fans uh, who traveled down for the series. There are also a number of folks who live in the Phoenix metro area who uh, used to uh, live in Omaha, used to uh, go to UNO, uh, who were there for the uh, series. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, this was Arizona State's first home conference series as a member of the nchc so it was kind of cool for uno uh, to be a, a part of that game and uh starting in the 2026-27 season uno will be arizona state's travel partner uh when st thomas joins the conference uh making it an even 10 team so Going into that Friday game, we were hoping for the best uh, late in the first period, 1753 into the period. Freshman Chase LaPinta puts UNO up one to nothing. Nice play by Cam Mitchell to set that up. Uh, LaPinta never hesitated, and that was his first goal as a Maverick Jason. One to nothing, UNO after one. Yeah, was, that was exciting. You hate it if it's against you, but you love it if you can score those late goals in periods. Just uh, you kind of thought you were getting out maybe an even tilt, and now, you know, Omaha's up one. So, you know, Arizona's thinking a little bit, and, you know, you Omaha's feeling a little better about their game. And uh, so love to see that. Love to see us first. And uh, like you said, he didn't hesitate, and that's something we've talked about. Uh, it just seems like guys are kind of – clutching the puck a little bit looking for something and so uh I, I really appreciated seeing him just kind of trust his gut and take the shot quick absolutely right that's something you emphasized in your analysis on last week's episode of the map puck cast great to see great to see uno with the lead after that first period second period 558 into the second ASU's Ty jackson ties it up it's a backdoor goal on uh, simon lacozzi the game was knotted one to one but 16-15 into the second. Sophomore Charlie Lurie puts UNO up 2-1 to one on the power play. Fired that in from the top of the circle uh, off a pass from Dylan Gratton. No hesitation again. Great to see Lurie having some success. That was his second game in a row with a point for the Mavs. Yeah, and a good look from Gratton to move the puck. Uh, Harrison starts the cycle. It's... Uh... That, that was a, that was our by far our best power play. So it's good to see them be productive on it and get something out of it because you kind of hate if you have one of those. It was a great power play, but we just couldn't score or something. Um, so I was I was glad to see them get rewarded uh, with that and a good all around play. And again, a late goal in the period. You know, just when Arizona thought they'd be even tilt into the third, and we get a little bit of a lead going in. Yep, UNO up two to one after two. Good position to be in, uh, as you mentioned, going into that third period. The 349 into the third, Arizona State's Anthony Dow ties it up on the power play. It's two to two at that point, kind of nip and tuck back and forth in that third period. It was a hard hitting game. Uh, 
Brock Bremer uh, got his bell rung uh, during uh, that uh, Friday Arizona State game. Uh, our guys have taken a, a lot of big hits this season. Late in the third period, 16-49 into the third, Sam Stang puts UNO up 3-2. to two. Turned out to be the game-winning goal. Uh, great puck handling by Sam Stang. You and I both have been uh, impressed with the transfer from Wisconsin this season. Yeah, he plays a heavy game. He's a reliable uh, on all ends of the ice. And uh, I think this was probably his best series that we've seen connecting two games together. Um, so we'll talk more about, you know, what we see from him later on, but yeah, that was, it was, it was a good weekend for him and a, a good goal. And um, again, defense moving the puck. And that seems to be the recipe for success for you. And if our defense can make smart plays out of the zone, and work us into transition faster and more effectively. Uh, you can tell that even teams with the size that, that Arizona State has and the game plan that they had coming in, they can have some trouble with Omaha. Um, you mentioned we were getting kind of banged up and stuff, and I think that's what we saw from Western, too. Uh, that's kind of the game plan for teams coming up against Omaha is play the body, finish checks, keep things mudded up and tight uh, and, you know, just basically wait on us to make mistakes. If, if we can start moving the puck faster, if, if we don't have to look for a play and, and we can just know where guys are going to be that chemistry that I've talked about a lot, you know, once that starts to click and stuff, teams are going to start finding that you can't play the body against them because you leave guys open in the middle of the net, just like with what, um, you know, Lapinta's goal and, and Sang's goal are, you know, they're both opportunities that were created because the puck was moving quickly um, and then just having the wherewithal to get the puck to the net fast. Absolutely right. Uh, Erdahl adds an empty net goal late. UNO wins the Friday game 4-2. to two. Big win for UNO. Uh, great to stop. Uh, that losing streak uh, in that Friday night game. Good position for UNO to be in going into the Saturday game. Nice to get some positive results uh, out there in the desert. As I mentioned, Bremer took a hit during the, that game and uh, something happened with uh, Zach Erdahl. He was injured during the contest. We don't know the details on his injury or how long he's going to be out, but he, uh, he was not available for the uh, Saturday night game. In addition to that, uh, Freshman goalie Kevin Radler got his first start in nets this season. Uh, Coach Gabinette alluded to that uh, last week uh, in the midweek presser. Uh, and freshman forward Liam Watkins, who had been banged up, who got injured uh, uh, before the season started, got his first game action of the season. So a lot of new guys getting in there, a lot of new guys getting in the lineup. I like it. As you know, um, I like to see these uh, freshmen get some playing time. Uh, it's baptism by fire, but that's the way you're going to get better uh, in the NCHC. So going into that first period on Saturday night, 1336 into the first, ASU's Artem Schlain puts the Sun Devils up one to nothing. It was just a greasy goal down low. ASU led one to nothing after one, Jason. Yeah, you could tell it was a different game for Omaha going into Saturday, uh, unfortunately. 349 uh, into the second. Sam Stang ties it up. Great setup by Harrison Israels uh, on that goal. Yeah, and good strong on his stick. Uh, you know, if that if that connection is there, then that's going to bode well for Omaha moving forward because they seem to have a lot of chemistry this weekend, uh, Israels and Stang. Yep, absolutely right. And, and our two Alaska transfers, Israels and Risk, are really starting to get going here. Uh, excited to see... Uh, Excited to see how things go uh, when we get to the second half of the season. 7.32 into the second, ASU's Ryan Alexander puts the Sun Devils up 2-1. to one. Tough position going into that third period down, but it was only a goal. Unfortunately, in that third period, 118 into the period, David Himovich puts ASU up 3-1. to one. I know that they say the two goal lead is the most dangerous lead in hockey, Jason, but uh, sometimes uh, it's hard to come back uh, when a team has that two goal buffer on you. Well, and especially in the, you know, in the third, I didn't think we really came out of the locker room very well in that period. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's an early goal. Now you're down two. you really didn't seem to have a lot of connection. 
uh you know you can tell it kind of gets into their head and um you know it's a really gummed up kind of of way of playing through that third unfortunately until um we get one back there probably midway through the third or so um you know that 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 gave you some hope but still then like it's just you can kind of tell that without the key guys there that there was a little bit of a mentality shift for for omaha um not just into that game but into that third period as well you alluded to the goal that UNO scored about midway through 1222 into the period freshman defenseman marcus brober gets his first goal as a maverick and it narrowed the lead to three to two. Uh, he fired that thing in from the slot as the team was moving in transition, which you and I uh, talked about uh, a little while ago, that being important for UNO to get uh, some scoring and offensive success. But uh, Arizona State goes on to win the game three to two. UNO gets a split in the series. You and I both predicted a split on last week's episode of the Mab Puck cast. Look, UNO very easily considering the guys that are out could have gotten swept in this series. So it's great to go on the road, get three big points. UNO is now three and one in the desert, Jason. We won those two games to start the season uh, out in Las Vegas uh, at the icebreaker tournament. uh, And we went uh, one and one in our series at Arizona state this season. So uh, maybe UNO needs to play all of their games in the Southwest United States. (laughs) Um, yeah, unfortunately, our conference isn't really aligned that way. I mean, Absolute. we'll be in Minnesota more than we'll be in the desert. <laughs> I will say this. UNO was outshot 87 to 44 on the weekend. That's a that's a rough stat uh, for uh, both of our goaltenders who are both very talented to, uh, to have to deal with. Well, and that's been been our operation this year unfortunately and uh, you know it's not going to be a recipe for success we've got to find a way to lock that down um you know i like our chances if we find a way to keep teams under 30 shots in a game um i just i just think that with our goaltending and and you know the forwards being who they are in the game that they play in the system that we play like you know, I think that we could easily hold them under two goals a game if we're, you know, putting 30, letting in 30. Um, when you're letting in 40s and 50s and 60s, like even with Simon back there, it's just a it's a tough thing to ask the guy to see that. Just not going to get very far on that. Yeah, we've got to be careful when we face the Denvers and North Dakotas of the world. Uh, uh, we've got to kind of button things up a little bit on that uh, regard because giving those two teams that number of chances it could get ugly very quick UNO is currently sitting eighth in the nchc uh miami who we are playing this upcoming week is ninth so we'll talk about them in a little bit uh uno is 59th out of 64 teams uh in division one hockey in goals so I, you know, I don't mean to point out all of the depressing uh, statistics uh, here. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't know the status of Zach Ertl for the upcoming series against Miami as of this recording. So stay tuned. We hope we get him back uh, and we hope everything's OK with Brock Bremer. You just you never know what the team this season, uh, the injury bug uh, has uh, has caught them. So not great. But Jason, yeah. all that considered, I've got to ask you. Who's your player of the week? Who did you like in this series against Arizona State? Yeah, this one was tough for me because honestly, I don't know how you felt about it seeing it live, but there were a few guys that I looked at saying that that wasn't, it wasn't just a good game. It was a good series for him. Um, And the two that really stuck out to me, I'll go defenseman and forward here, but Dylan Gratton, best hands down, best games we've seen from him um this season both nights led the team in block shots uh he gets an assist on a friday night goal i think you'd said um so like he's producing offensively he's there you know helping out blocking some of those shots uh and and there was just a lot of times that i noticed that his stick was active uh he was in a good position he wasn't getting caught uh chipping in or or pinching too much on a on a late blue line kind of play uh so really really liked his play um but unfortunately like i sam sam staying was just really really good this weekend um I mean, all facets of the game. He's an, he's a 200 foot player. You know, he's everything that we, 
you and I at least like in hockey players that meat and potatoes that you talk about all the time, John. Um, I think he's just kind of the, the quintessential player like that for you. And so hopefully I'm not stealing your pick, but um, I commend Sam. That's, that's the whole weekend. That guy was, was great for us. And uh, it's kind of a bummer that he was a transfer and not a freshman. (laughs) Yeah, it's really too bad uh, that we didn't get an opportunity to have him earlier in his career because he's been great and he's the kind of player you and I really like. You know, you mentioned Dylan Gratton. He transfers in from Penn State, uh, a really uh, talented defenseman uh, for Guy Godowski uh, out with the Nittany Lions. And uh, I'm glad to see him here. And as he becomes more comfortable uh, with his uh teammates uh this season i think we're going to see great things from him because uh, he was very productive uh when he was at uh, penn state the last couple of seasons and we don't talk about the defensemen nearly enough and we probably should because we've got a lot of talented defensemen like noah ellis jacob gavin etc so uh, i'll have to be better about rectifying that but uh i've uh, got to honor uh Freshman forward Chase LaPinta for getting his first goal as a Maverick. That's something I have a tradition of doing on this podcast. Uh, He was a former Arizona State recruit. Uh, So pretty cool that he got that goal uh, against the Sun Devils this weekend. And he's a guy, again, these young freshman forwards, as they become acclimated, they face more NCHC play. I think they're going to get better and better for UNO. They're going to mesh really well with those veterans. And that's what we need uh, as we start looking here uh, in the near term to Christmas break is uh, trying to find our way uh, to uh, to get to a 500 record if possible. And it's going to be guys like LaPinta who uh, are going to make a difference in that. Uh, He had 21 goals and 25 assists uh, in the USHL last season with two teams. uh, And I've liked him so far. Uh, He's gotten more playing time uh, than I think we thought he was going to get as a freshman, but uh, he's really making the most of the opportunity so far. Yeah. But those injuries will do that for us. Uh, You know, if you go back to back to the way too early line predictions that we did at the beginning of the season, right? Like how many of those guys are, are as the pros would say on IR kind of thing. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's tough. And, and coaches said in some of the press conferences that it's a next man up mentality. And so these freshmen are going to be expected to take some leaps and, and do some things that maybe play some roles that maybe they weren't expected to play at least this first year. And, you know, the good thing is, is that it could set up Omaha you know, even in a down year like this, it could really set them up for success in the future because you've got, you know, freshman players that you were thinking are five to eight minutes a game um, just to kind of get their legs under them and, and, and get a feel for what NCHC and NCAA hockey is. And, you know, two years from now, maybe they will be 20 minutes. Well, now they're getting 12, 15, 18 minutes a game. They're just going to be that more developed and that more ready when they are juniors and seniors and so um it you know it's it's could suck right now with, with a down year and with so many people you know injuries but there is a bright side to it always uh looking ahead to the future and uh as you mentioned and as gabinet has said next man up so uh nice to see uh some of these guys uh stepping up uh in the lineup <laughs> We've got to talk about some things you missed in Arizona. And I miss Jason being in Arizona. You were with Bridget and I on the trip back in January. You were not uh, able to come this time. We missed having you along. Uh, and it was, a, it was a fun time. The weather was a lot better than last January. So uh, it would have been fun to get out and do some stuff. Uh, Jason, did you miss going to Arizona with us? Oh, yeah. yeah. I I hate not being able to follow the team around. And so, um, but you know, family duties call. And so we're a few years away from the freedom of empty nesting. But when we get there, the team better watch out because they're going to have to deal with me screaming and yelling everywhere. So absolutely. You were fortunate enough last season to be able to come on some, uh, some really fun road series with us. So hopefully Uh, There'll be some uh, opportunities maybe in the second half. I know your daughters are super busy and you guys are super busy. So we will just have to see. Um, There was a pregame patio party outside of Mullet Arena before Friday's game. There was a DJ and a food truck. 
Uh, the UNO players were warming up next to the festivities, so it was fun to park in the parking garage uh, and get to see the guys out there warming up uh, as they usually do uh, before the game in the concourse uh, at Baxter Arena or whatever arena they're playing in. But when you uh, travel to the desert, uh, the weather's nice enough and you have the opportunity to do that. On Saturday, the UNO Alumni Association funded a pregame get-together at Eureka Tempe, uh, which is across the street from the arena. So uh, we were able to walk over there before the game and know that we didn't have to drive or have a long walk to get back uh, for the start of that 5 p.m. game uh, on Saturday night. We met some Arizona-based UNO fans, including a gentleman named John, spelled the same way that I spell John, uh, who was Durango during kind of the 2015 to 2017 years. So it was cool to get to chat with them. Um, and there were a number of uh, transplants from Omaha who have ended up down in Arizona at uh, the pregame party, including some UNO fans who've bought homes down there. So a uh, very interesting vibe compared to a lot of the road series that we go to in Minnesota. You, yeah. Did you ask him if he was the... Uh the UNO Durango that was in Boston in 2019. I did not ask him if he was the, the UNO Durango that, uh, that was in Boston for that, uh, for that uh, frozen four in uh, 2015. He, oh no. He, when we were in inbound, remember when we were at, Oh inbound? yeah, there was a guy who, yes, there was a guy. Remember? Who, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't, Cause I didn't it was Durango him. and I can't remember what the years were. Wow. Was that, who knows? That might have been him. That might have been him. John, will... you may have met the mysterious <laughs> Durango that was on the board from inbound. We'll have to see if we can find his information and check up on that. He did tell me that he wanted to skate as Durango at the games and they wouldn't let him skate. So I I don't know what that was all. About. So we asked him, we're like, can you skate? And he's like, I can skate well enough. And he said they were nervous about him skating in the in the uh costume because they asked have you ever skated in a costume before and he's like no but he's like can it be that hard to skate in a costume so i thought it was interesting we're gonna have to follow up with him and uh find out more about his experience playing durango and whether he was the guy who signed uh the message board as durango at that uh, inbound conference that you uh, me, bridget and jolene attended in 2019 so uh, we will find out um, but I do want to give special thanks to Karen Furbush with the Phoenix UNO Alumni Association chapter for organizing the event and hosting. They had some nice stacks. Bridget and I left earlier than we wanted to because, you know, we like to be at the arena an hour before game time starts uh, to get little video clips for the folks and uh, and uh, just kind of settle in and uh, look at the starting lineup and all that uh, at the game. So I have to ask you a question yes, about that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Curious me missing it, but okay. how different was the entry? Cause that was something that we talked about in January. Cause we were there for the, I don't remember what the name of the tournament was, but it was a, like it was a mini tournament kind of thing. And you know, these were games against them. So, um, what was, uh, what was that entry? Like, was it the same as what it was back then where you had to come in on like the ground floor and go up, but didn't seem like a main entrance kind of weird thing. Yeah, it absolutely was. Uh, they had the uh, ticket kiosks where you held up your phone, which I love those. I think that those are great because, you know, nine times out of 10, when we go into Baxter Arena, the folks there have a hard time getting those handheld scanners to, you know, make the little dweedle notification when they're trying to scan my phone. So this was great. I just held the thing up. It scanned it and it was ready to go. But yeah, you go in on that lower level by the ticket office and the merchandise stand and the little self-serve concession kiosk. And then you walk up to your seats. We were actually sitting on the end that was closest to that entrance. This time we were on the opposite end when we were with you back in January mm -hmm. at, uh, at the desert classic. So, uh, so it was good. And you and I had, were kind of questioning the concession concessions when we were there back in January I did not have any concessions other than a bottle of water this time so I don't know if they've improved over last time but the concessions are relatively scant uh in the arena as you will recall Jason I do remember that we'll have to next year when we make the trip down we'll uh 
investigate the concession situation a little bit more in depth for our listeners. How's that? Exactly. We'll have to try the burgers, try the pizza, um, see how that goes. Uh, it was neat to catch up with Micah Urim. Uh, he moved to Arizona about a decade ago. He actually worked for UNO equipment manager Mark Payne in the early 2000s. Uh, and he was a poster on the mapuck.com message board. So it's really cool when those folks who were kind of message board members from Mavpuck from the past who come up and kind of reintroduce themselves. It had been years uh, since we had talked to Micah. He is a season ticket holder um, at Arizona State. And he told me that he's redoing his backyard. So in the future, he would be willing to host UNO fans, uh, the local chapter of the UNO Alumni Association, out to his house for a, a barbecue and have some food. So uh, we'll have to see if that uh, happens in the future, Jason. Very cool. Very, very nice. So it's a fun trip. If you get a chance to go out to Arizona State to watch UNO, it's really worthwhile. Bridget yeah. and I got to chill out go eat at some different places that we liked. There was a mall across the street from our uh, hotel. So we were able to go uh, do a little shopping over there, uh, get some food over there. And there was a really nice pool at our hotel. And Bridget and I run our neighborhood pool all summer long, but it's not very <laughs> relaxing to go swim there when you're the person in charge. So we got to chill out on Thursday and just have a pool day and relax and have some fun there. So, uh, so it was a lot of fun. So, I hope you and possibly Jolene are able to come with us next time for that series because it is a lot of fun. But before that, before we talk about that, John, yes, John, I have something that you missed being in Phoenix and not here in Omaha. What Luckily, happened? you can go back and listen to this. Okay. But uh, in the first intermission of fire Friday's game, they had an interview. The uh, radio announcers for Arizona State had an interview with uh, the NCHC commissioner. Uh, really interesting. She talks a lot about welcoming Arizona to the conference and what a program is and its history. And um, so for fans that maybe uh, took a break from the game or uh, didn't go back, uh, I'm sure that that's probably on the recording for uh, on NCHC.tv. But yeah, she talks about the new format a lot uh, when um, St. Thomas comes in and, and we move up to 10 teams and talks a little bit about the future expansions and plans for the league. Um, and so, yeah, so apparently there may be other uh, things to come. It sounds like they're working on, you know, what's next for the league, but they're uh, they sound pretty happy about having Arizona and then here in a, a year or two uh, having uh St. Thomas come in as well. So definitely uh, you'll have to go back and check that out, John. Thank you for the heads up on that. She was there for the puck drop on Friday night as loyal watchers and listeners of the podcast. know, Bridget interviewed Heather Weems uh, at the beginning of the season. The future of this conference is a fascinating topic to me. And we talk all the time about whether they'll stop at 10 teams or whether it will expand after that. And with all the changes going on in college athletics, you never know what kind of reorientation and consolidation will happen with conferences. So thank you for the heads up. And that's a great heads up mm -hmm. for uh, other fans who didn't happen to watch the games. They will be on NCHC TV. So thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. There you go. <sighs> Got to talk about that Miami series. Uh, as I mentioned uh before Jason uh, interrupted me there with that key piece of information. <laughs> Miami comes to Baxter Arena on November 22nd and 23rd. Miami is 3-9-2 and two overall. They are 0-4-0 in conference play. They've lost their last six games. First-year head coach Anthony Noreen is 3-9-2 at the Division I level. Uh, he had a very successful career as the head coach with the Tri-City Storm. Uh, 24 players in the NCAA tournament last season were former Tri-City players. Every year we look at this series and we say, Miami series is a series that UNO needs to win. There was a period there where they were kind of snake bitten uh, and they uh, struggled uh, when they shouldn't have struggled against Miami. So uh, 
Yeah, we've well, talked about that on on podcasts, usually after those games, Kara College as well for the years that CC was down. They're definitely a much better team this year than they have been in the past. And, you know, how important it is that you beat the teams that are expected to be expected to be below you in the standings. Um, and going into this weekend, that needs to be the message. This is not a, uh, you know, hang back and take an easy weekend you know, after a, a hard fought battle in the desert, this is a, you need all six points. You need to win both games. We need the team to experience the, the chant and the song, the fight song in the lobby. Like we need these, these freshmen and these grad student transfers and stuff like these guys, they haven't been through that. They don't know what it's like to have all of our UNO fans surround them and cheer and, and, hoop and holler and sing the fight song and all that stuff so um we need we need some when we win we when we sing here this this weekend absolutely that's one of the great traditions of uno hockey and it makes such a big difference i think it makes the players really realize just how invested our fans are and it's great to have them come out sing the fight song People are high-fiving them. They're asking for autographs, posing for pictures. And I really think it's an opportunity, as you mentioned, for the freshmen and the transfer players to really feel like they're part of the team and part of the community. Right now, they've just kind of been sort of on an island, sort of separated from that. So hopefully uh, they get to experience that and they need to experience that and they need to get uh, a, a couple of big wins. Uh, players to watch, their points leader currently is senior forward Matt Chapani. He has five goals and six assists. Uh, junior forward Max Dukovic missed last Saturday's game against Duluth with a lower body injury. View from the glass uh, suggested it might be a knee injury. So We'll see uh, if he uh, is in the lineup or not. Uh, he's a talented forward uh, for the Red Hawks. Grad defenseman Hampus Rydquist leads the team in block shots with 18. And in net, freshman Ethan Dahlmeyer and sophomore Bruno Breveris have split time. Dahlmeyer has a 2.83 goals against average and a .890 save percentage. And Bruveris has a 3.53 goals against average and a .879 save percentage. In addition, uh, grad goalie Brett Miller uh, also saw some game action last weekend. Look, this is a big rebuild project for Anthony Noreen. He's a young coach. I think he will have success in the future, but this is going to be a rough road. Certainly with UNO being banged up, uh, Miami's uh, got to look at it potentially as an opportunity to get some points uh, against a wounded Maverick squad, Jason. Yeah, and you know they're thinking if we can find a way to not be the worst team in the NCHC for a season, uh, it'll it'll bode well for their their future plans and and kind of building rebuilding the program. Um, they're going to come ready. They're like you said, they're looking at us saying blood in the water. This is a team that we can beat. Um, you know, there's a lot of firepower out, especially if if Erdahl's out too, if Bremer's out too. Like those those two were. The ones we were planning on leaning on with all the other injuries and so yeah it's next man up but you also got to be ready because you know that they're not coming in here to roll over and they've done it before and and come in here and stolen points and um, we just really need the guys to step up we absolutely do so jason what do you think is going to happen this weekend do you think uno is going to get swept do you think they're going to split with the red hawks or you think UNO is going to sweep Miami this upcoming weekend at Baxter Arena? I, I'm going to have some faith. I'm going to be a little bit optimistic, and I'm going to say that we sweep and win both games. I think that Friday night might be a little bit of a closer game. Omaha seems to struggle a little bit more early in games and early in series, and so I'm most worried about that Friday, but I think we're going to come out, and I think that they're going to get that experience like we just talked about uh, with the We Win, We Sing and and all of that. And I think that'll be the the big motivation push. Um, and I'm hoping for I'm hoping for a Saturday night blowout. I'd love to see, a, you know, 6-1, 8-1, I don't know, put up 10 on them or something crazy like that. Like it's those types of things that if if that can happen and, and if this team can start really finding some room against a team that's struggling a little bit and, you know, just doesn't have the the high caliber talent that uh, North Dakota and Denver has. Um, and they can start finding that that could give them a lot of confidence going into the rest of the season. Absolutely. Right. And like you, 
I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to say we sweep. We need to sweep uh, this series. And when you look at UNO, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of positives for this team. We've got two strong goaltenders in Lacozzi and Radler. Look, Radler was terrific uh, in the USHL last season. Uh, he's an NHL draft pick, and as he becomes more acclimated to the college game and to NCHC play, I think uh, he's going to be really good. So two great options there. We've got a strong decor again. It's a work in progress uh, up front with the forwards, but uh, look, these guys were all recruited to play uh, at the Division One level, and uh, they're here to play uh, NCHC hockey. And uh, those grads and uh, the freshmen uh, have got a lot to prove. Uh, and uh, you mix those in with uh, some of the uh, solid veteran uh, players that we have, like Jimmy Glenn and Tyler Rollwagon. Um, I think good things can happen. So they've just got to trust the process and uh, see if they can get it done. We would love to see some regular season wins uh, at Baxter Arena, Jason. Uh, It's been a long time. So uh, we're hoping to be uh, celebrating uh, both nights uh, with the team in the lobby. Jason, any final thoughts uh, on this Miami series? I got nothing more. Just looking for some more uh, hockey at Baxter. Always great to watch hockey at Baxter Arena, and uh, we hope to see uh, all of you out there. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays games will be uh, at 7.07 p.m. Omaha time. Friday night's game is Lumberjack Night, Jason. I don't know if you remember this, but several years ago at Baxter Arena, we would always have a Mavpuck Lumberjack sighting where we would take pictures of some random person in the arena wearing the red and black lumberjack flannel shirts. So this is actually a full blown night. So it's going to be nuts. We talked, uh, we talked with the athletic department uh, about the promotions this weekend. They're encouraging fans to wear flannel, wear beards. I mean, Jason has a beard, so you don't have to wear a beard. They so now he's going to go buy a flannel. Okay. Got it. Yeah. They did say no axes though. So just, I can't, you won't go through the metal detector. It will not go through the metal detector. I'm sorry to say they don't want you to be that authentic uh, on lumberjack night. What if it's a plastic ax? I no, I don't think they're going to let that thing. (laughs) I don't think they're going to let, it's not going to happen, Jason. It is not (laughs) going to ruin all the fun. We're ruining all the fun. I'll be curious to see if they have any video board graphics or anything like that. For Oh, I hope they do. I hope they do too. I still think it would be awesome if, and I, I'm sure it's an NCAA thing. I never really dug into it, but you know, like I, I still miss all the like special jerseys and the like, like I think it'd be kind of fun if there was like this flannel designed UNO Jersey that they could like auction off. That would be pretty slick. That would be absolutely amazing. And in fact, I think that there was a minor league team last season that had Gosh, I can't remember. I think it was like a lumberjack kind of design. Gosh, we I tell you what, if at some point they continue this tradition and they do in the future, that would be amazing to have a jersey that looked like a red and black flannel shirt. I would definitely get one of those in an auction. So that is a great idea, Jason. I like that kind of thinking. Uh, Saturday's game is military appreciation night. So the team will be wearing special military jerseys on Saturday nights. We assume that there will be an auction, but no word as of this recording. I mean, there's been an auction the last two seasons on military. Yeah, it's kind of expected at this point. Uh, If you want to listen to the games, they will, of course, be on 1290 Coil in Omaha or online on the Varsity Network. Mike Valancourt and Terry Leahy will have the call per usual. Uh, You can, of course, watch the games on nchc.tv. Be sure to follow MapPuck on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. You can find links to all of our social channels at mavpuck.com, as well as back episodes of this podcast. But until next time, Jason, go Mavs. Go Mavs.